All right, so here we are in the second of two videos about this, the Canon AV-1. In this video, we're going to talk about how to do everything with the camera. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the battery because you can't do anything with this camera unless you have a battery in it. 100% uh, of the functions in this camera are dependent on the battery. So to, to open the battery chamber, there's a little button right here. You just push it down towards the base of the camera like magic. And then if, if you have trouble getting into it, you can take the lens off. That gives you an extra couple millimeters of, of access, which might just be enough or, or not. There we go. So you take the old dead battery out, grab your new battery, close that, and you're good. Now with your battery, uh, uh, new battery in, you can do everything you need to do with the camera. Let's look at how to change lenses with this camera. Because this is an interchangeable lens camera, you can change lenses at any point. Because there's the shutter curtain, I'm doing something you should never do and lifting this manually. Because there's the shutter curtain down there, light cannot reach the film when the lenses are off, which means you can change them at any time. So if you have a lens on your camera and it's an FDN lens like this one, you push the silver button and you rotate it counter or anti-clockwise and then just remove. To put it back on, you do exactly the opposite. You find this red dot here and this red dot here. You line them up and turn it until it clicks, just like that. If you have one of the older FD lenses that has a silver ring, only the silver ring turns. But the principle is the same. You find a red dot on the silver ring and the red dot here to, to, load, um, to mount it and then just turn the silver ring. Let's talk about how film works in this camera. As we saw in the first video, here is the film cassette chamber. This is what the, where the film's gonna go. You can see there's a little fork here. This is connected to the film rewind, and it's gonna connect to this part right here, which has a couple of little things in it that the fork connects to. It's gonna drop it in and just adjust that until it closes all the way. You want this to seat right up against the ISO selection dial. I'm gonna pull out our leader. I'm gonna put it into, come on. I literally picked the worst roll of film I have to do this and I don't know why. Come on. Oh my gosh. There we go. Okay, so we've got that lined up. So next we're going to advance it to the S. I'm sorry, from the S to the one, which is three shots. Now film is one and done, so you don't wanna do what I'm about to do, which is open the back. I'm gonna show you how film moves through this camera. When you take a picture and actuate the shutter, and then you advance the film, you can see that it moves along here. These top and bottom outside guide rails prevent it from moving up and down. And then you can see the inner silver ones through the sprockets that when the pressure plate sandwiches it, keep it very flat. You can see here where the, where the take up sprocket is pulling the film and how it's being taken up on the film take up spool over here. And no, you, the film is not gonna move backwards because of these, this sprocket. So let's say that you've taken your entire roll of film and it's time to rewind it. You push the film rewind button and now you can rewind your film. Listen for this sound. It doesn't sound quite like that because that flipped backwards, but as you rewind it, you can generally hear this come off of the film take-up spool. And then in real life, you would finish rewinding this, rewind the film all the way into here. And at that point, you would open up the film back, take your film out. I'm gonna reuse this for another video, so I'm not gonna rewind it the whole way. But then you would take your, your roll of film out, and if you are ready for your next one, just put it in and continue on. So just remember, Film is one and done. If you open the film back when the film is in here, you will erase every photo you've taken. So once the film goes in and you have it properly 
hooked up to the film take-up spool. You close it and then you leave this closed until you have the film completely rewound into the cassette. Let's talk about how to do flash photography with the Canon AV-1. It does not have a flash PC port on it, so you can only use the hot shoe. And what that means is you just need to put a flash in the hot shoe, like this, and you're ready to go. If you have, if your only flash points forward like this, this configuration, lens, flash, pointing the same direction, will give you people and subjects that look like they're made of wax. So if possible, get a flash that articulates so that you can bounce your flash off of the ceiling to give your subjects more favorable lighting. If you can't, um, well, I don't really have an option for you at that point, I'm sorry. But your best bet for flash use when you can only mount it on top of the camera is to have your flash go up and away towards the ceiling when you have it on your camera and then bounce back down off of the ceiling onto your subjects. When you take a flash photo, you want to make sure that you have your camera set to 1 60th with the flash next to it or to self timer with the flash. Those are your two flash modes. I'm not sure if the flash will trigger an automatic exposure, but because you have no control over the shutter speed, you could very well end up, if it does trigger, with a partially illuminated um, scene. When, when the flash triggers, what happens is that you have a, a focal plane curtain that's in front of the film. It opens at 1 60th of a second, the entire frame of your film is open to light the flash triggers and then the second curtain comes in and closes and then you advance the film and repeat. If you're at one two thousandth of a second and the flash triggers, it'll be, you might have a sliver like this that's illuminated and then everything else will be black because the, fl the light from the flash will be blocked by the shutter curtains. So that's why you need to use one sixtieth of a second and flash for this camera to make sure that the shutter is operating properly for the entire scene to receive light from the flash when you take the photo. This mock-up is what you would see if you looked through the viewfinder. The camera has a standard split prism focusing screen on a matte field and then around the split prism is uh, a, a prism field. All of that's designed to help you focus. The matte field, if you bring something into focus then you can just see it when it's in focus. With the split prism, if you line something up, if you, if you can find a vertical line in your scene and send the focal, focal range that you want, then what you can do is line up those two vertical lines in the center split prism area. And when they're aligned, then you know it's in focus. Over on the right is your light meter. And if you push the battery check button, your needle's going to go up. And mine's showing around 500, which, uh, as I understand it, anything above 30 means that your battery is good. Anything below 30 means that it is not. The numbers in the light meter on the right side are your shutter speeds. So if you set it to, I'm at F8 right now, and if you push the shutter button halfway down, your needle will go to the shutter speed. So I'm seeing one that's halfway between a 15th and a 30th, which means that the shutter speed would be approximately 1 25th of a second. The red on the top and the bottom means you either have too much light and the shutter speed is not fast enough if it's on the top, or on the bottom, the shutter speed would have to be longer than two seconds, which it can't do, so you'll have an underexposed image. So red on the top guarantees an overexposed image, red on the bottom guarantees an underexposed image. And that's it, that's pretty much all there is in the viewfinder. It's nice and simple, easy to read, very easy to interpret. Uh, it'll take about three minutes to understand what the camera's telling you when you look through your viewfinder window. So let's talk about what the, how the light meter works. Let's say that you're taking a picture of this scene, okay? What's inside of my fingers right now is gonna represent about 75% of the metering data. So if what's in the center is very bright, it's, and what's around this is very dark, it's gonna make what's around it even darker, and what's in the middle will be about properly exposed. Vice versa, if what's in the middle is very dark and what's around it is very light, what's gonna happen is you're going to have a very, very bright outside area, 
with a, the shadows being slightly lighter than they should be in the center. Center weighted metering, that said, is a very accurate way to meter a scene. It's really good if you put your subjects in this central box. You're going to do very well for, for your metering almost all the time. So um, center weighted is a, a metering mode I use very, very frequently and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it whatsoever and it's generally a very reliable metering mode, especially with film cameras. The next thing we're going to talk about is how to do exposure value compensation with your camera. Once you load the film, you're going to set the ISO dial to the correct speed. Let's say you're at 400, right? And you're using 400 speed film. Let's say that you decide you want to intentionally uh, overexpose your image. And you could do this for a reason, like let's say you have a very dark subject in the center and a, and a brighter out uh, surround. You could use this button right here to compensate, but if you want to have more control over that, you could just adjust your ISO, say up two stops, and that will give you control over your exposure, even though this does an automatic exposure. So you can use your ISO dial to control your shutter speed based on your aperture with whatever film you are using. It's kind of an advanced technique um, to be able to understand when this is a appropriate. So if you're just starting out, don't worry about doing that. Worry about learning the fundamentals of it. And at some point, when you start to understand how ISO, how sensitivity or film speed correspond to what you're seeing, then it's worth branching out and experimenting with using the ISO dial to con to alter your exposure value, specifically your shutter speed. So the next thing is, let's talk about how to take a photo with this camera. I'm gonna go through the process of taking a picture and it's really very easy. So if you're using a flash, you wanna have it in 1 60th. If you're using it for anything else, you wanna have it in automatic mode. You'll have the film in your camera and your ISO will be set correctly. Next thing you wanna do is figure out which aperture you want and just select that. If your camera cannot do a shutter speed, let's say you're at f16 and your camera says, nope, not enough light, you can just stop it down a bunch and then, okay, great, now you can take a picture and hand hold it. Uh, so you just want to, or if you have, if you're at 1.8 and the camera says there's too much light, it's, I, I don't have a fast enough shutter speed, you can stop it down a couple of clicks and then you'll be able to take a photo because you'll have an exposure which is in the camera's capabilities. So once you've selected your aperture, then you just focus, get your scene composed as you would like, take your picture, advance your film. That's how you take a picture with the AV-1. It's very simple, very user-friendly. But what about double exposures? It is possible to take a double exposure with the AV-1. What you're gonna do is we're gonna use this dial over here. So let's say, for instance, that you're at f5.6 and your camera says a proper shutter speed would be 1 1 25th of a second and that will give you a proper exposure. Well, you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna have two frames hit the, two frames worth of light hit the same piece of film because you'll overexpose it. So when you make a double exposure, you want to take the proper meter reading, or in this case, the camera will automatically calculate that but you wanna cut the amount of light going to the film in half for each of the two exposures in your double exposure. You have no control over the shutter speed, so you've gotta trick the camera. So let's say you're using 400 ISO film and you want to do a double exposure. Adjust this to, oh, the wrong button again. Adjust this to 800. Now you're giving the film half as much light as it needs in order to have a proper exposure. Take your first frame. Next thing you're gonna do is hold on to this frame rewind. You can pop that out, that sometimes makes it a little bit easier. Hold the film rewind button underneath and advance. What that's gonna do is rearm the shutter through the advancing motion, but because you're holding the film in place and you've taken the, you've allowed the film tension sprocket to become free moving by pushing down the rewind button, the film's not going to move. Leave this at 800, assuming you're using 400 ISO film. 
take your second picture, now advance it. It takes a little bit of advancing for the, before the film starts moving again. So next what you want to do is put the lens cap on. You want to set this to 1 60th because you want to make sure that you don't have a super long exposure. We'll just close this down to f22 to be safe. Take a dead frame and advance. If you don't take a dead frame, your double exposure frame can partially overlap the next frame, potentially ruining both of them. So the dead frame is a very important part of the double exposure process with this camera. And that's it. That is everything there is to know about the Canon AV-1. This is a really nice little Canon camera, really good 35 millimeter, fantastic learning camera. It's really light, very easy to carry around. So if this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm making content, which is useful and helpful to you. If you have comments or suggestions, please leave those below. I'm pretty good about responding fairly quickly. If you'd like to subscribe to find out when I have more videos about cameras and techniques and things like that, please do. And one last thing, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Did I put in a dead battery? Or did I put it in upside down? I, I think this camera may have just died. Just crapped out while I was making this video. All right, so there is a chance that this is gonna be a first where the, the camera dies in the middle of the video. Let's see if I can make this work. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Looks like I just had two dead batteries.